Act Three of Dandy Dick by Arthur Wing Penero. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three: The Next Day. Scene One: The Strong Box, St. Marvels. Scene Two: The Deanery again. The curtain will be lowered for a few minutes between the two scenes the first scene is the interior of a country police station a quaint old room with plaster walls oaken beams and a gothic mullioned window looking on to the street a massive door with a small sliding wicket and an iron grating opens to a prisoner's cell the room is partly furnished as a kitchen partly as a police station a copy of the police regulations and other official documents and implements hanging on the wall it is the morning after the events of the previous act hannah a buxom fresh-looking young woman in a print gown has been engaged in cooking while singing gaily opening a door and calling with a slight dialect noah darling noah from another room in a rough country voice yes you'll have your dinner before you drive your prisoner over to durnston won't she darling yes Hannah closing the door. Yas. Noah's in a nice temper today over summit. Ah, oh, well, I suppose all public characters is liable to irritation. There is a knock at the outer door. Hannah opening it sees Blore with a troubled look on his face. Well, ah, never. Mr. Blore from the deanery. Come in. You might knock me down with her. Blore entering and shaking hands mournfully how do you do mrs topping and how is the dear dean bless him the sweetest soul in the world blore to himself good gracious she doesn't know of our misfortune to hannah i uh, i haven't seen him this morning well this is real kind of you calling on an old friend edward when I think that I were cook at the deanery seven years, and that since I left you to get wedded not a soul of you has been near me, it do seem hard. Well, you see, Anna, the kitchen took Humbridge at your marrying a policeman at Durnston. It was regarded as a mesilliance. Well, now Mr. Topping's got the appointment of head constable at St. Marvel's. What's that regarded as? A rise on the scales, Hannah, a decided rise. But still you've only been a week in St. Marvels, and you've got to fight your way up. I think I'm as hop as ever I'm like to be. However, Jane and Sarah and Willis the stable boy have humbent so far as to ask me to leave their cards, knowing I was a calling. He produces from an old leather pocket book three very dirty pieces of pasteboard which he gives to hannah hannah taking them in her apron with pride thank em kindly when's their evening we receive on tuesdays at the side gate and how are you my dear kissing her cheek don't edward blore don't when you was miss heavens there wasn't these social barriers anna shut up Noah's jealous of the very apron strings what go round my waist. I'm not so free and andy with my kisses now, I can tell you. Then what is friendship but a name? But Mr. Toppin isn't indoors now, surely. Hannah nodding her head. Uh? Why, he took a man up last night. What of it? Why, uh, I thought that when any arrest was made in St. Marvel's, the prisoner was lodged here only for the night, and that the head constable had to drive him over to Durnston Police Station the first thing in the morning. That's the rule, but Noah's behind hand today and ain't going into Durnston till after dinner. Then the prisoner is on the premises. Yes, he's in our cell. Oh, and where is the apartment in question? The cell? That's it. Blor, looking round in horror. Oh. The strong box, they call it in St. Marvel's. Oh, my goodness. Homely fancy. Whimpering to himself. 
and him accustomed to his shaving water hate him my kindly hen to button his gaiters oh here's a warning whatever is the matter with you edward anna anna my dear it's this very prisoner what i have called on you respectin oh then the honour ain't a compliment to me after all mr blaw i'm killin two birds with one stone my dear hannah throwing the cards into blaw's head you can take them back to the deanery with mrs topping's comps blaw shaking the cards out of his head and replacing them in his pocket-book i will leave them on you again to-morrow anna but anna dearie do you know that this unfortunate man was stuck in our stables last night no i never ask no one nothing about queen's business he don't want two women over him then you haven't seen the miserable culprit lor no i was in bed hours when noah brought him home i take no interest in it all they tell us it's only a wretched poacher or a petty lastery will get in st marvel's my poor noah ain't never likely to have the chance of a horrid murder in a place what returns a conservative ah my joints burning kneeling to look into the oven but anna suppose this case you got hold of now is a case what will shake old england to its basis suppose it means columns in the paper with toppin's name a figurin suppose this family reading it old its own with divorce cases hullo you know something about this arrest you do no no i don't i merely said suppose i merely wish to encourage you anna to implant and hope that crime may brighten your wedded life hannah sitting at the table and referring to an official book the man was found trespassing in the deanery stables with intent refuses to give his name or any account of his self blore to himself if i could only find out where the dandy dick had any of the medicine it would so calm me at the races what am i to do it doesn't appear that the horse in the stables took it does it hannah looking up sharply took what uh, took fright you're sure there's no confession of any sort anna dear as he is bending over hannah noah topping appears noah is a dense-looking ugly countryman with red hair a bristling beard and a vindictive leer he's dressed in ill-fitting clothes as a rural police constable noah fiercely anna hannah starting and replacing the book oh don't this is mr blaw from the deanery come to see us an old friend of mine blaw advances to noah with a nervous smile extending his hand noah taking blaw's hand and holding it firmly a friend of ern is a friend of mine i hope so mr topping i thank you she's getting me a lot of nice new friends this week since we come to st marvel's of course dear anna was a loving favourite with everybody ah well then as her friends be mine i'm taking the liberty one by one of gradually dropping on em all blore getting his hand away dear me and if i catch any old fly buzzing around my lady i'll venture to break his head with my staff oh noah blore preparing to depart i uh, i merely called to know if anything had been found out about the ruffian took in our stables last night is that your business it's uh, it's my master's business he's the dean ain't he yes noah of course noah fiercely shut up darling very well then give mr topping's respects to the dean and say i'll run up to the deanery and see him after i've took my man over to durnston thank you i hope the dean will be at home good day anna good day mr toppin offering his hand into which noah significantly places his truncheon blore goes out quickly hannah whimpering oh noah noah i don't believe as we shall ever get a large circle of friends round us now then 
selecting a pair of handcuffs and examining them critically. Them will do. Slipping them into his pocket and turning upon Hannah suddenly. Anna? Yes, Nori? Brighten up, me darling. The little time you have me at home with you. Yes, Nori? She bustles about and begins to lay the cloth. I'm just a going round to the stable to put old Nick in the cart. Oh, don't you trust to Nick, Noah, dear? He's such a vicious brute. Kit, he's safer in the cart. Shut up, darling. Nick can take me onto the edge of the hill in half the time. The hill? Oh, uh, what do you think I've put off taking my man to Durnston to now for? Why, I'm a-going to get a glimpse of the racing on me way over. Opening the wicket in the cell door and looking in. There he is, sulky. To Hannah. Open the hoven door, Anna, and let the smell of the cooking get into him. Oh, no, no, it's torture. Do as I tell ye. She opens the oven door. Torture? Of course it's torture. That's my rule. Whenever I get a hold of a darn obstinate creature what won't reveal his identity, I opens the hoven door. He goes out into the street, and as he departs, the woeful face of the dean appears at the wicket, his head being still enveloped in the fur cap. Hannah, shutting the oven door. Not me. Torturing prisoners might have done for the Middle Ages what Noah's always clattering about, but not for my time of life. I'll shut that wicket. Crossing close to the wicket, her face almost comes against the Dean's. She gives a cry. Ah, <gasps> the Dean! Oh! He disappears. Oh, no, not my old master, never the master! Tottering to the wicket and looking in. Master, look at me! It's Hannah, your poor faithful servant. Hannah! The face of the dean reappears. Hannah Evans. It's Hannah Topping, me Evans. Wife of the constable, what's going to take you to cruel Durnstone? Sinking, weeping upon the ground at the door. Oh, Mr. Dean, sir, what have you been up to? What have you been up to? What have you been up to? Woman, I am the victim of a misfortune only partially merited. Hannah, on her knees, clasping her hands. Tell me what you've done, master dear. Give it a name for the love of goodness. My poor Hannah, I fear I have placed myself in an equivocal position. Ah! Be quiet, woman. Is it a change of cooking that's brought you to such ways? I cooked for you for seven happy years. The dean, sniffing. Alas, you seem to have lost none of your culinary skill. Master, are you hungry? I am sorely tried by your domestic preparations. Henna, with clenched hands and a determined look. Oh! Quickly locking and bolting the street door. No, I can't put that brute of a horse to under ten minutes. The duplicate key or the strong box. Producing a large key with which she unlocks the cell door. Master, you'll give me your paddle not to cut, won't you? Under any other circumstances, Hannah, I should resent that insinuation. Don't resent nothing. Shove. Shove your hardest, Dean, dear. Pulling the door, which opens sufficiently to let out the Dean. The Dean, as he enters the room. Good day, Hannah. You have bettered yourself, I hope? Hannah, hysterically flinging herself upon the dean. Oh, master, master! The dean, putting her from him sternly. Hannah, Mrs. Topping. Oh, ah, no, ah, no, but crime levels all, dear sir. You appear to misapprehend the precise degree of criminality which attaches to me, Mrs. Topping. In the eyes of that majestic but imperfect instrument, the law, I am an innocent, if not an injured man. Ah, stick to that, sir. Stick to it if you think it's likely to serve your wicked ends. Placing bread with other things on the table. My good woman, 
a single word from me to those at the deanery would instantly restore me to home, family, and accustomed diet. Ah, they all tell that tale what comes here. Why don't you send word, Dean, dear? Because it would involve revelations of my temporary moral aberration. Henna, putting her apron to her eyes with a howl. Oh! Because I should return to the deanery with my dignity that priceless possession of a man's middle age, with my dignity seriously impaired. Oh, don't, sir, don't! How could I face my simple children who have hitherto, not unreasonably, regarded me as faultless? How could I again walk erect in the streets of St. Marvel's, with my name blazoned on the records of a police station of the very humblest description? Sinking into a chair, and snatching up a piece of breads, which he begins munching. Henna wiping her eyes oh sir it's a treat to hear you compared with the ordinary criminal class but master dear though my noah don't recognize you through his being a stranger to st marvel's how'll you fare when you get to durnstone i have one great buoyant hope that a word in the ear of the durnstone superintendent will send me forth an unquestioned man you and he will be the sole keepers of my precious secret. May its possession be a lasting comfort to you both. Master, is what you've told me your only chance of getting off unknown? It is the sole remaining chance of averting a calamity of almost national importance. Then you're as done as that joint in my oven. Woman. The superintendent at Durnstone, John Ruggles, also the two inspectors, Whitaker and Parker, well them and their wives and families are chapel folk no yes the dean totters across to a chair into which he sinks with his head upon the table master listen it's all over it's all over no no listen i was well fed and kept seven years at the deanery i've been wed to noah topping eight weeks that six years and ten months loving duty do to you and yours before I owe nothing to my darling Noah. Master dear, you shan't be took to Durnstone. Silence. Hannah Topping, formerly Evans, it is my duty to inform you that your reasoning does more credit to your heart than to your head. I can't help that. The devil's always in a woman's heart because it's the warmest place to get to taking a small key from the table drawer. Here, take that. Pushing the key into the pocket of his coat. When you once get free from my darling Noah, that key unlocks your handcuffs. Handcuffs? How are you to get free? That's the question now, isn't it? I'll tell you. My Noah drives you over to Durnstone with old Nick in the cart. Old Nick? That's the horse. Now, Nick was formerly in the Durnstone Fire Brigade, and when he hears the familiar signal of a double whistle, you can't hold him in. There's the whistle. Putting it into the dean's pocket. Directly you turn into Pear Tree Lane, blow once, and you'll see Noah with his nose in the air pull in to wrench his hands off. Jump out, roll clear of the wheel, keep cool and hopeful and blow again. Before you can get the mud out of your eyes, Noah and the horse and cart will be well into Durnstone, and may Providence restore a young husband safe to his doting wife. Hannah, how dare you! Recoiling, horror-stricken. Hannah, crying. Oh, oh, oh. Is this the fruit of your seven years' constant cookery at the deanery? Oh, dear, I wouldn't have done it, only this is your first offence. My first offence? Oh! You're not too old. I want to give you another start in life. Another start? Woman, do you think I've no conscience? Do you think I don't realize the enormity of the... of the difficulties in alighting from a vehicle in rapid motion? Henna, opening the oven and taking out a small joint in a baking tin, which she places on the table. It's anger what makes you feel conscientious. The dean, waving her away. I have done with you. With me, sir, but not with the joint. You'll feel wickeder when you've had a little nourishment. 
he looks hungrily at the dish. That's right, Dean, dear. Taste my darling Noah's favorite dish. The Dean, advancing towards the table. Oh, Hannah Topping, Hannah Topping. Clutching the carving knife despairingly. I have no more woman cooks the deanery. This reads me a lesson. Sitting and carving with desperation. Don't stint yourself, sir. You can't blow that whistle on an empty frame. The dean begins to eat. Don't my cooking carry you back, sir? Oh, say it do. Ah, oh, if every mouthful would carry me back one little hour, I would finish this joint. Noah Topping, unperceived by Hannah and the dean, climbs in by the window, his eyes bolting with rage. He glares around the room, taking in everything at a glance. Noah, under his breath. My man of mystery, a waited on by my newly made wife, and a heating o' my favourite meal. Touching Hannah on the arm, she turns and faces him, speechless with fright. The dean, still eating. If my mind were calmer, this would be an all-sufficient repast. Hannah tries to speak, then clasps her hands and sinks on her knees to Noah. Hannah, a little plain cold water in a simple tumbler, please. Noah, grimly folding his arms. Hannah, introduce me. Hannah gives a cry and clings to Noah's legs. The dean, calmly to Noah. Am I to gather, constable, from your respective attitudes, that you object to these little kindnesses extended to me by your worthy wife? I'm wishing to know the name of my worthy wife's friend. A friend of ern is a friend of mine. No, re, no, re. She's getting me a lot of nice new friends since we come to St. Marvel's. No, re. I made this gentleman's acquaintance through the wicked in a casual way. Aye, cooks and railings, cooks and railings. I might have guessed my wedded life had come to this. He spoke to me just as a strange gentleman ought to speak to a lady. Didn't you, sir? Didn't you? Hannah, do not let us even under these circumstances prevaricate. Such is not quite the case. Noah advances savagely to the dean. There is a knocking at the door. Noah restrains himself and faces the dean. No, this is neither the time nor the place we people at the door and dinner on the table to spill a strange man's blood. I trust that your self-respect as an officer of the law will avert anything so unseemly. Aye, that's it. You touch me on my point of pride. There ain't another police station in all Durnston conducted more strict and rigid nor what mine is, and it shall so continue. You and me is a going to set out for Durnston, and when the charges now standing against you is entered, it is I, Noah Topping, what'll add another. There is another knock at the door. Noah! The charge of alienating the affections of my wife, Anna. No, no. I am worse. The embezzling of my midday meal prepared by her hands. Points into the cell. Go in. You have five minutes more in the home you have ruined and laid waste. The dean, going to the door and turning to Noah. You will at least receive my earnest assurance that this worthy woman is extremely innocent. Innocent? Points to the joint on the table. Look there! The dean, much overcome, disappears through the cell door, which Noah closes and locks. The knock at the door is repeated. To Hannah, pointing to the outer door. Unlock that door! Oh, no, Ray. You'll never be popular in St. Marvel's. Unlock that door. Hannah unlocks the door and admits Georgiana and Sir Tristram, both dressed for the race course. Dear me, is this the police station? Yes, lady. Take a chair, lady, near the fire. To Sir Tristram. Sit down, sir. This is my first visit to a police station, my good woman, 
I hope it will be the last. Oh, don't say that, ma'am. We're only auxiliary ear, ma'am. The bench sets at Durnstone. I must say you try to make everybody feel at home. Hannah curtsies. It's beautifully Arcadian. Georgiana to Hannah. Perhaps this is only a police station for the young. No, ma'am, we take ladies and gentlemen like yourselves. Noah, who has not been noticed, surveying Georgiana and Sir Tristram gloomily. Anna, introduce me. Georgiana, facing Noah. Good gracious, what's that? Oh, good morning. Anna's a-getting a lot of nice new friends this week since we come to St. Marvel's. Noah, Noah, the lady and gentleman is strange. Oh. Are you the man in charge here? I. Are you seeing me on business or pleasure? Do you imagine people come here to see you? No, they generally come to see my wife. However, if it is business... Pointing to the other side of the room. That's the official side. This is domestic. Your hall kindly move over. Oh, oh certainly. certainly. Changing their seats. Now look here, my man. This lady is Mrs. Tidman. Mrs. Tidman is the sister of Dr. Jed, the Dean of St. Marvel's. Oh, there's something wrong with your wife. I, she's profligate. Proceedings are pending. Georgiana to Sir Tristram. Strange police station. My flesh creeps. Sir Tristram to Noah. Well, my good man, to come to the point, my poor friend and this lady's brother, Dr. Jed, the dean, you know, has mysteriously and unaccountably disappeared. Vanished. Gone. Absconded. Absconded? How dare you? Respectable man, was he? What do you mean? This lady is his sister. Now look here, it's no good at getting nasty and irritable with the law. I'll come over to ye officially. Putting the baking tin under his arm, he crosses over to Sir Tristram and Georgiana. Sir Tristram, putting his handkerchief to his face. Don't bring that horrible odour of cooking over here. Oh, take it away. What is it? It's evidence against my profligate wife. Sir Tristram and Georgiana exchange looks of impatience. Do you realise that my poor brother, the Dean, is missing? Aye. Touching this missing Dean. I left him last night to retire to rest. This morning he is not to be found. Aye. Has it struck you to look in his bed? Of, of course. course. Everybody did that. One would have done. It's only confusing Hall doing it. Money matters, right or wrong. Georgiana puts her handkerchief to her eyes. Do put your questions more feelingly. This is his sister. I am his friend. You will push yourself forward. Had he anything on his mind? Yes. Then I've got a theory. What, what is it? it? A theory that will put you all out of suspense. Yes, yes. yes. I've been a good bit about. I read a deal, and I'm a shrewd, experienced man. I should say there is nothing but a ordinary case of suicide. Georgiana sits faintly. Sir Tristram, savagely to Noah. Get out of the way. Georgiana! Oh, Tris, if this were true, how could we break it to the girls? I could run up during the evening and break it to the girls. Sir Tristram turns upon Noah. Look here, all you've got to do is hold your tongue and take down my description of the Dean and report his disappearance to Dunstone. Pushing him into a chair. Go on. Dictating. Missing. 
the very reverend augustin jed dean of st marvels poor gus poor gus henna softly to georgiana lady lady noah prepares to write depositing the baking tin on the table georgiana turning eh hush listen to me speaks to georgiana excitedly sir tristram to noah have you got that noah writing laboriously with his legs curled round the chair and his head on the table i i'm spilling it my own way oh dear old gus dictating description oh no description i suppose he was just a ordinary sort of looking man no no description georgiana turning from henna excitedly description a little short thin man with black hair and a squint sir tristram to georgiana no no he isn't yes he is georgiana what are you talking about i'm gus's sister i ought to know what he's like good heavens georgiana your mind is not going georgiana clutching sir tristram's arm and whispering in his ear as she points to the cell door he's in there eh? gus is the villain found dozing dandy dick last night sir tristram falling back oh henna seizes sir tristram and talks to him rapidly to noah what have you written i've written answers to the name of gus georgiana snatching the paper from him it's not wanted i've altered my mind i'm too busy to bother about him this week what after wasting my time look here you're the constable who took the man in the deanery stables last night Aye. looking out of the window there's my car outside ready to take the scoundrel over to durnston i should like to see him you can view him passing out he tucks the baking tin under his arm and goes up to the cell door georgiana to herself oh gus gus noah unlocking the door i warn yer he's an awful looking creature i can't stand it i love horrors noah goes into the cell closing the door after him tris georgiana what was my brother's motive in bolusing dandy last night i can't think the first thing to do is get him out of this hole this good woman has arranged his escape but we can't trust to gus rolling out of a flying dog cart why it's as much as i could do oh yes lady he'll do it i've provided for everything don't betray him to noah there's another an awful charge hanging over his reverend ed another charge another oh tris to think my own stock should run vicious like this hush lady noah comes out of the cell with the dean who is in handcuffs oh, oh. the dean raising his eyes sees sir tristram and georgiana and recoils with a groan sinking onto a chair oh oh you get no no stay i am the owner of the horse stabled at the deanery i make no charge against this wretched person to the dean oh man man i was discovered administering to a suffering beast a simple remedy for chills i am an unfortunate creature do with me what you will the analysis hasn't come home from the chemists yet is this the truth yes sir tristram to noah release this man release him he was found trespassing in the stables of the late diane who has committed suicide oh i hush the diseased diane is the homely man what can withdraw one charge i listen hush, hush. 
and I'm the holy man what can withdraw the other. You get out. Get out. I charge this person unknown with alienating the affections of my wife while I was putting my horse to, and I'm going to drive him over to Durnston with the evidence. Oh, lady, lady, it's appearances what is against us. Noah, through the opening of the door. Whoa, steady there, get back. Georgiana, whispering to the dean. I am disappointed in you, Augustine. Have you got this wretched woman's whistle? Yes. Sir Tristram, softly to the dean. Oh, Jed, Jed. Um, these are what you call principles? Have you got the key of your handcuffs? Yes. Noah, appearing in the doorway. Time's up. Come on. May I say a few parting words in the home I have apparently wrecked? Say them and have done. In setting out upon a journey, the termination of which is problematical, I desire to attest that this erring constable is the husband of a wife from whom it is impossible to withhold respect, if not admiration. You hear him? As for my wretched self, the confession of my weaknesses must be reserved for another time, another place. To Georgiana? To you, whose privilege it is to shelter in the sanctity of the deanery, I give this earnest admonition. Within an hour from this terrible moment, let the fire be lighted in the drawing-room. Let the missing man's warm bath be waiting for its master, a change of linen prepared. Withhold your judgments. Wait. This is none of your business. Come on. I am ready. Noah takes him by the arm and leads him out. Oh, what am I to think of my brother? Hannah, kneeling at Georgiana's feet. Think? That he's the beautifulest, sweetest man in all Dernshire. Woman, it's I and my whistle and Nick the fire brigade horse will bring him back to the deanery safe and unharmed. Not a soul but we three'll ever know of his misfortune. Listening. Hark, they're off. Noah, outside. Get up now. Get up, old girl. Hannah, rushing to the door and looking out. Ah, oh, he's done for. Done, done for. for? The dean can whistle himself blue. Noah's put Kitty in the cart and left old Nick at home. The end of the first scene. The second scene is in the morning room at the deanery again. Salome and Sheba are sitting there gloomily. Poor papa. Poor dear papa. He must return very soon. He must. He must. In the meantime, it is such a comfort to feel that we have no cause for self-reproach. But the anxiety is terribly wearing. Nothing is so weakening, Salome. Sheba, dear. Sheba, clinging to Salome. If I should pine and ultimately die of the suspense, I want you to have my work-box. Salome, shaking her head and sadly turning away. Thank you, dear. But if Papa is not home for afternoon tea... You will outlive me. Turning towards the window as Major Tarver and Mr. Darby appear outside. Miss Jed, Miss Jed. Sheba, here are Gerald Tarver and Mr. Darby. Oh, the presumption. Open the window and dare them to enter. Salome unfastens the window. Thank you. Don't be shocked when you see Tarver. Tarver and Darby enter, dressed for the races. But Darby is supporting Tava, who looks extremely weakly. Pardon this informal method of presenting ourselves. You do well, gentlemen, to intrude upon two feeble women at a moment of sorrow. One step further, and I shall ask Major Tarver, who is nearest the bell, to ring for help. Tava sinks into a chair. Darby, standing by the side of Tava. There now. Fact is, Miss Jed, that Tarver is in an exceedingly critical condition. Feeling that he has incurred your displeasure, he has failed even in the struggle to gain the race course. I have taken him to Dr. Middleton, and I explained that Major Tarver loved with a passion. Looking at Sheba. Second only to my own. Salome, 
sitting comfortably on the settee oh we cannot listen to you mr darby go on sir if you can the two girls exchange looks the doctor made a searching examination of the major's tongue and diagnosed that unless the major at once proposed to the lady in question and was accepted three weeks or a month at the seaside would be absolutely imperative shall i continue oh certainly i am helpless we are curious to see to what lengths you will go the pitiable condition of my poor friend speaks for itself i beg your pardon it does nothing of the kind tava rising with difficulty and approaching salome salome i have loved you distractedly for upwards of eight weeks salome going to him oh major tava let me pass holding his coat firmly let me pass i say unless you push me never spare me this scene mr darby darby follows sheba across the room to a man in my condition love is either a rapid and fatal melody or it is an admirable digestive accept me and my merry laugh once more rings through the mess-room reject me and my collection of vocal music loose and in volumes will be brought to the hammer and the bird as it were will trill no more and is it really i who would hush the little throaty songster certainly taking a sheet of paper from his pocket i have the doctor's certificate to that effect both reading the certificate they walk into the library oh mr darby i have never thought of marriage seriously people never do till they are married but think only think of my age pardon me sheba but what is your age oh it is so very little it is not worth mentioning cannot we remain friends and occasionally correspond well of course if you insist no no i see that it is impracticable it must be wed or part all i ask is time time to ponder over such a question time to know myself better certainly how long give me two or three minutes hush they separate as tava and salome re-enter the room tava is glaring excitedly and biting his nails i never thought i should live to be accepted by anyone i shall buy some gay songs eh when can i see the dean oh don't sell me papa has been out all night all, all night? night isn't it terrible oh what do you think of it mr darby shocking but we oughtn't to condemn him unheard condemn my papa sheba at the window here's aunt georgiana hey look out tarver going out quickly salome pulling tarver after her come this way and let us take cuttings in the conservatory they go out mr darby mr darby wait for me i have decided yes she goes out by the door as georgiana enters excitedly at the window georgiana waving her handkerchief come on tris the course is clear mind the gatepost hold him up now give him his head sir tristram and hatcham enter by the window carrying the dean they all look as though they have been recently engaged in a prolonged struggle put him down put him down that i will ma'am and gladly they deposit the dean in a chair and georgiana and sir tristram each seize a hand feeling the dean's pulse while hatcham puts his hand on the dean's heart the dean opening his eyes where am i now he lives hurrah cheer man cheer sir tristram and hatcham quietly hurrah to hatcham we can't shout here go and cheer as loudly as you can in the roadway by yourself yes sir hatcham runs out at the window the dean gradually recovering georgiana martin how are you jet old boy how do you feel now gus torn to fragments so you are thank heaven he's conscious i feel as if i had been walked over carefully by a large concourse of the lower orders <laughs> so you have been thank heaven 
his memory is all right hatchem's voice is heard in the distance cheering they all listen that's hatchem i'll raise his wages do i understand that i have been forcibly and illegally rescued that's it old fellow who has committed such a reprehensible act a woman who would have been a heroine to any age georgiana georgiana i am bound to overlook it in a relative but never let this occur again tell him you found out that that other woman's plan went lame didn't you i discovered its inefficacy after a prolonged period of ineffectual whistling but we ascertained the road the genial constable was going to follow he was bound for the edge of the hill up pear tree lane to watch the races directly we knew this tris and i made for the hill bless your soul there were hundreds of my old friends there welchers pickpockets car sharpers all the lowest race court cads in the kingdom in a minute i was in the middle of them as much as home as a duchess in a drawing-room a queen in a palace bodicea among the druids do you know me i hallowed out instantly there was a cry of blessed if it ain't george tidd tears of real joy sprang to my eyes while i was wiping them away tris had his pockets emptied and i lost my watch ah jed it was a glorious moment tris made a back and i stood on it supported by a correct card merchant on either side dear friends i said brothers i'm with you once again you should have heard the shouts of honest welcome before i could obtain silence my field glasses had gone on their long journey listen to me i said a very dear relative of mine has been collared for playing the three card trick on his way down from town there was a groan of sympathy he'll be on the brow of the hill with a bobby in half an hour said i who's for the rescue a dead deep silence followed broken only by the sweet voice of a young child saying what'll we get for it a pound apiece said i there was a roar of assent and my concluding words and possibly six months were never heard at that moment tris back could stand it no longer and we came heavily to the ground together <laughs> seizing the dean by the hand and dragging him up now you know whose hands have led you back to your own manger embracing him and oh brother confess isn't there something good and noble in true english sport after all every abused institution has its redeeming characteristic but whence is the money to come to reward these dreadful persons i cannot reasonably ask my girls to organize a bazaar or concert concert i'm a rich woman rich well i've cleared fifteen hundred over the handicap the dean recoiling no then the horse who enjoyed the shelter of the deanery last night dandy dick one in a common canter all the rest nowhere and bonny betsy walked in with the policeman the dean to himself five hundred pounds towards the spire five hundred oh where is blore with the good news look at him lively as a cricket sir tristram i am under the impression that your horse swallowed reluctantly a small portion of that bolus last night before i was surprised and removed by the by i am expecting the analysis of that concoction any minute spare yourself the trouble the secret is with me i seek no acknowledgment from either of you but in your moment of deplorable triumph remember with gratitude the little volume of the horse and its ailments and the prosaic name of its humane author john cox he goes out through the library but oh tris marden what can i ever say to you anything you like except thank you don't stop me why you were the man who hauled augustine out of the cart by his legs oh but why mention such trifles they're not trifles and when his cap fell off it was you brave fellow that you are who pulled the horse's nose-bag over my brother's head so that he shouldn't be recognized my dear georgiana these are the common courtesies of everyday life 
they are acts which any true woman would esteem gus won't readily forget the critical moment when all the cut chaff ran down the back of his neck nor shall i nor shall i forget the way in which you gave dandy his whisky out of a soda water bottle just before the race oh, that's nothing any lady would do the same nothing you'll look like the florence nightingale of the paddock oh georgiana why 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 won't you marry me why 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 because you've only just asked me tris goes to him cordially but when i touched your hand last night you reared yes tris old man but love is founded on mutual esteem last night you hadn't put my brother's head in that nose-bag they go together to the fireplace he with his arm round her waist sheba looking in at the door how annoying there's aunt and sir tristram in this room salome and major tarver are sitting on the hot pipes in the conservatory where am i and mr darby to go papa come back she withdraws quickly as the dean enters through the library carrying a paper in his hand he has now resumed his normal appearance home what sonorous music is in the world home with the secret of my sad misfortune buried in the bosoms of a faithful few home with my family influence intact home with the sceptre of my dignity still tight in my grasp what is this i have picked up on the stairs reads with a horrified look as hatcham enters at the window beg pardon sir tristram what is it the chemist has just brought the analysis where is he sir tristram and georgiana go out at the window following hatcham it is too horrible reading debtor to lewis isaacs costumier to the queen bow street total forty pounds nineteen there was a fancy masked ball at Dernston last night. Salome, Sheba, no, no! Salome and Sheba, bounding in and rushing at the dean. Papa, Papa! Papa. Our own Papa! Pepsi! Salome seizes his hands, Sheba his coattails, and turn him round violently. Our parent returned! Pepsi, come back! Stop! Papa, why have you tortured us with anxiety? where have you been you naughty man before i answer a question which from a child to its parent partakes of the unpardonable vice of curiosity i demand an explanation of this disreputable document reading debtor to lewis isaacs costumier to the queen oh sheba sits aghast on the table salome distractedly falls on the floor i will not follow this legend in all its revolting intricacies suffice it its moral is inculcated by the mournful total forty pounds nineteen imps of deceit looking from one to the other there was a ball at dernston last night i know it spare us you couldn't have been there papa there i trust i was better that is otherwise employed referring to the bill which of my hitherto trusted daughters was a lady no i will say a person of the period of the french revolution sheba points to salome and a flower girl of an unknown epoch salome points to sheba to your respective rooms the girls cling together let your blinds be drawn at seven porridge will be brought to you papa go pepsi go papa we poor girls as we are can pay the bill you cannot go through the kindness of our aunt we have won fifty pounds what at the races the dean recoiling you too you too drawn into the vortex is there no conscience that is clear is there no guilelessness left in this house with a possible exception of my own sheba sobbing we always knew a little more than you gave us credit for papa the dean handing sheba the bill take this horrid thing never let it meet my eyes again as for the scandalous costumes they shall be raffled for in aid of local charities 
confidence, that precious pearl in the snug shell of domesticity, is at an end between us. I chastise you both by permanently withholding from you the reason of my absence from home last night. Go! The girls totter out as Sir Tristram enters quickly at the window, followed by Georgiana, carrying the basin containing the bolus. Sir Tristram has an opened letter in his hand. Good heavens, Jed! The analysis has arrived! I am absolutely indifferent. Indifferent? indifferent? The Dean, to Georgiana. How dare you confront me without even the semblance of a blush? You, who have enabled my innocent babies, for the first time in their lives, to discharge one of their own accounts. There isn't a blush in our family. If there were, you'd want it. Sheba and Salome appear outside the window, looking in. Jed, you were once my friend, and you are to be my relative. The dean, looking at Georgiana. My sister? To Sir Tristram. I offer no opposition. But not even our approaching family tie prevents me designating you as one of the most atrocious conspirators known in the history of the turf. Conspirator? As the owner of one half of Dandy Dick, I denounce you. As the owner of the other half, I denounce you. You? Sheba and Salome enter and remain standing in the recess, listening. The chief ingredient of your infernal preparation is known. It contains nothing that I would not cheerfully administer to my own children. Oh! I believe you. Pointing to the paper. Strychnine. Sixteen grains. Salome and Sheba, clinging to each other terrified. Oh! Strychnine? Summon my devoted servant Blore, in whose presence the innocuous mixture was compounded. Georgiana rings the bell. The girls hide behind the window curtains. This analysis is simply the pardonable result of over-enthusiasm on the part of our local chemist. You're a disgrace to the pretty little police station where you slept last night. Blor enters and stands unnoticed. I will prove that in the deanery stables the common laws of hospitality have never been transgressed. Give me the bowl. Georgiana hands the dean the basin from the table. A simple remedy for a chill. Strychnine. Sixteen grains. I, myself, am suffering from the exposure of last night. Taking the remaining bolus and opening his mouth. Observe me. Blore, rushing forward, snatching the basin from the dean and sinking onto his knees. No, no. Don't. Don't. You won't hang the oldest servant in the dignitary. Blore. I did it. I had an honest fancy for Bonnie Betsy, and I won't want this gentleman's horse out of the way. And while you was mixing the dose with the best ecclesiastical intentions, I introduced a foreign element. The dean, pulling Blore up by his coat collar. Viper! Oh, sir, it was all for the sake of the dean. The dean? The dear Dean had only fifty pounds to spare for sporting purposes, and I thought a gentleman of his eye standing up to have a certain tea. Jed! Augustine! I can conceal it no longer. I... I instructed this unworthy creature to back Dandy Dick on behalf of the Restoration Fund. Sir Tristram, shaking Blor. And you didn't do it? No. Why not? In the name of that tottering spire, why not? Hey, sir, thinking as you'd given some of a mixture to Dandy, I put your cheerful little offering on to Bonnie Betsy. Salome and Sheba disappear. Oh, to Blore, I could have pardoned everything but this last act of disobedience. You are unworthy of the deanery. Leave it for some ordinary household. If I leave the deanery, I shall give my reasons. And then what will folks think of you and me in our old age? You wouldn't spread this tale in St. Marble's. Not if sober, sir. But suppose grief drove me to my cups. I must save you from intemperance at any cost. Remain in my service, a sad 
sober, and above all, silent man. Salome and Sheba appear, as Blore goes out through the window. Papa! To your rooms, I am distracted. Major Tarva and Mr. Dolby! If you have sufficiently merged all sense of moral rectitude as to declare that I am not at home, do so. No, no. Papa, we have accidentally discovered that you, our parents, have stooped to deception, if not to crime. The Dean, staggering back. Oh! We are still young. The sooner, therefore, we are removed from any unfortunate influence, the better. We have an opportunity of beginning life afresh. These two gallant gentlemen have proposed for us. Then I am at home. Where are they? He goes out rapidly, followed by Salome and Sheba. Directly they have disappeared, Noah Topping, looking dishevelled, rushes in at the window, with Hannah clinging to him. Noah, glaring round the room. Is this here the deanery? Georgiana and Sir Tristram come to him. Nori? Noah? Come back. There's been a man rescued from my lawful custody while my face was unofficially held downwards in the mud. The villain has been traced back to the deanery. Go away. Come away. The man was an unknown lover of my newly made wife. You mustn't bring your domestic affairs here. This is a subject for your own fireside of an evening. The dean appears outside the window with Salome, Sheba, Tarver, and Darby. The dean, outside. Come in, Major Tarver. Come in, Mr. Darby. That's his voice. The dean enters, followed by Salome, Tarver, Sheba, and Darby. Noah, confronting the dean. My man! No, 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 Ray! You're speaking to Dr. Jed, the dean of St. Marvel's. I'm speaking to the man I took last night. The culprit as has alienated the affections of my wife. Wait one moment. Going out at the window. Salome and Tava go into the library and sit at the writing table. Darby sits in an armchair with Sheba on the arm. The dean, mildly. Do not let us chide a man who is conscientious even in error. Looking at Hannah. I think I see Hannah Evans. Once an excellent cook under this very roof. I'm Mrs. Topping now, sir, pride of the constable. And oh, do forgive him, he's a master ignorance. Come away. Hannah returns to Noah as Sir Tristram re-enters with Hatcham. Sir Tristram to Hatcham. Hatcham! Pointing to the dean. Is that the man you and the constable secured in the stable last night? That, sir, bless your art, sir, that's the dean himself. That'll do. Hatcham to Noah. Why, our man was a short, thin individual. Hatcham goes out at the window. The dean to Noah. I trust you are perfectly satisfied? Noah, wiping his brow and looking puzzled. I'm done. Don't trouble further. I withdraw unreservedly any charge against this unknown person found on my premises last night. I attribute to him the most innocent intentions. Hannah, you and your worthy husband will stay and dine in my kitchen. Good afternoon. Is it a hot dinner? Hot, with ale. Noah, turning angrily to Hannah. Now then, you don't know a real gentleman when you see one. Why don't he thank the dean warmly? Hannah, kissing the dean's hands with a curtsy. Thank you, sir. The dean, benignly. Go, go. I take a kindly interest in you both. They back out, bowing and curtsying. Well, Gus, you're out of all your troubles. Are you happy? Happy? My family influence gone forever? My dignity crushed out of all recognition? The genial summer of the deanery frosted by the winter of deceit? Ah, oh, Gus, when once you lay the whip about the withers of the horse called deception, he takes the bit between his teeth, and only the devil can stop him, and he'd rather not. Shall I tell you who has been riding the horse hardest? Who? <laughs> 
the dean georgiana i'm surprised at you sheba sits at the piano and plays a bright air softly darby standing behind her salome and tava stand in the archway georgiana slapping the dean on the back look here augustine george tidd will lend you that thousand for the poor innocent old spire the dean taking her hand oh georgiana on one condition that you'll admit there's no harm in our laughing at a sporting dean no no i cannot allow it tris my brother gus doesn't want us to be merry at his expense <laughs> <laughs> the dean trying to silence them no no i forbid it hush why chad there's no harm in laughter for those who laugh or those who are laughed at provided always firstly that it is folly that is laughed at and not virtue secondly that it is our friends who laugh at us to the audience as we hope they all will for our pains the end end of act three end of dandy dick by arthur wing pinero